In this video, I'm going to show you how MathChops works and exactly how you can use it with your students. We'll go over all the main games, how to create a student account, what to assign each week, what to do during the sessions, and how to manage your roster. If you want to get the most out of this video, you should do everything that I do. So every once in a while, I'll say, oh, you can pause the video here. That's so that you can have the time to play the games yourself or create the student account and work with all the interfaces on the site. You do need a full account in order to take all of these actions, but we have an unlimited five week free trial for tutors. So if you're really not sure if you want to use MathShops, you can just create that full account and then cancel as soon as you're done and you won't pay anything. The first thing you should do is play the games in your onboarding checklist at the top of your screen. These are the same ones you'll be assigning to your students. This one is called the level setter. It adapts to you in real time and the result determines your starting level on the site. This is a good time to pause the video and play the game yourself. It takes about 10 minutes. The next game is the level challenge. It's the main game on the site. It's the only way students can raise their overall level once they've played that level setter. You have to get a certain number of questions right before you get three wrong. If you do that, your score goes up and every other game on the site gets harder. This is a good time to pause the video and play this game yourself. It takes about five minutes. At a certain point, the level challenge is going to get too hard for the student. Whatever that score is, that's a really accurate score prediction. You'll see that prediction right here on the level challenge card on the homepage. When they get stuck at a certain point, that's when they'll start to play the other game so that they can build their skills at their level. The most popular game type for this is the third one on your checklist, the category challenge. You can access them here next to the level challenge. I usually have the student work on their current level. So if they're stuck at level 540, they'll earn all of the level 540 badges. These games allow you to practice specific categories at specific levels of difficulty. I'm going to select quadratic 540. You can see you only have to get six questions right in order to earn a green badge. It takes about five minutes to play. This is a good time to pause the video and play a category challenge. When you're done, you'll see that green badge on the challenges page. Now that you know how the main games work, let's look at an actual student account. We'll start by creating an account. If you're not already there, click the students link at the top of your screen. Then click the orange plus button and select by email. In general, it's best to use Gmail accounts because then they can use the sign in with Google option, which doesn't require a password. But this is just a dummy account and we're going to delete it at the end of the tutorial. You can make the email whatever you want as long as it isn't already in our system. Maybe try the name of your hometown plus a two-digit number at example.com. The password has to be eight characters and include one number and one letter. Write this password down because we're going to use it in a minute. Pick whatever subject you want. We can add more later if we want to. This time multiplier is for students who have that accommodation on the actual test. I'm going to skip this field, but you'd enter the parent email if you wanted them to get a weekly report. For the subscription type, choose monthly or custom end date. The starter accounts get locked out after 50 questions or after they've beaten the level challenge twice, whichever comes first. The monthly accounts auto renew every month. The custom end date ones downgrade to free starter accounts on the date you select. You're not going to get charged anything during your free trial period, so you should sign everyone up for a full account. I'm going to choose a custom end date one. Now click Review Upload and click Go. If you didn't already save the password and email somewhere, do that now before you close the window because you won't see the password again. Go ahead and close it, and now you can see the student you added on your roster. We're going to log into the account you just created using an incognito window. Sign in with the credentials you just made. The student has their own version of the onboarding checklist. This is the first thing you'll assign to them. Tell them to log into MathChops and play the three games in the onboarding checklist. I'm actually going to answer a few more questions here in the student's account. Let's play my favorite game, 
break the bank. On this one, you bet according to how confident you are in your answer. The version of this game depends on the level they've achieved. This student is at the lowest level, so the game's going to be pretty easy. But a 780 student would see a totally different game. And that game would also be taking into account the questions they got right or wrong. Now let's talk about what happens during a session. The first thing I do is ask the student to share their screen and go to their Analyze page so that we can see their work for the week. It's really important to check on their work every week, just like you would for any assignment. If you don't, they probably won't do any work for you. On this page, you can see their overall stats and the questions they answered. You can see the timestamp and what the student answered. When you're done reviewing these questions, give your student an assignment for next week. I'll usually assign one of two things. If the level seems low, I'll have them play the level challenge. So let's say that they're getting 640 on practice tests, but they're only at 590 on math chops, then they should work on the level challenge. But if the level seems accurate, what they're getting on math chops is about what they're getting on practice tests too, then I would have them work on the category challenges. So now you know the typical routine. When you meet with the student, you go to their analyze page, you go through all the ones they missed, then you set an assignment for next week, and that'll usually be the level challenge or three category challenge badges. Back in my tutor account, you can see the questions that were just answered. And if you click on the row, you'll see all the same details we're reviewing on that analyze page. There's one more thing to cover, editing student accounts. Go to your students page and click this edit pencil. This is where you can add a subject. Just click in that box and select it from the dropdown. If they qualify for extra time, you can add that here. You can also edit the subscription type. But right now, I want to remove this student entirely so that I'm not getting charged and they aren't on my roster. I can do that by clicking the unlink button. Remember to click the save icon up here. You'll see a little summary, then click go to confirm. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of how to use MathChops. If you have any questions, please email me at mike at mathchops.com.